We're going to work with vectors here a little bit using a mathematical model, but I want you to be able to see something in the way these things actually work straight up. If I have two vectors, this one here is acting at 33 newtons directly up, and I have another vector that's 88 newtons acting to the right. You remember that when we introduced addition of vectors, we really need to move either this vector over here or that vector uh, let me draw them for you. If I move this vector over here and go from tail to head, I get this vector down below. It wouldn't have mattered if I had moved this vector up on top. The net result is the, cell, is the same. This line right here that we have labeled in our diagram, we're going to refer to as the resultant. And the resultant has a magnitude and it has a direction. Well, how do we calculate the magnitude? Magnitude, you'll notice if you've got a right angle right here, like that, we can calculate the magnitude of the resultant by a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagorean theorem will allow us to calculate the magnitude of this. So as we do that then, we're going to take the square root of both sides, cancels the square from the right side. Now if I use the actual data that I have, a squared, 88 squared, plus b squared, 33 squared, if I take the square root of that, that's equal to the length of the side c, the resultant vector. So going ahead and doing that, adding my calculator, 88 squared plus 33 squared equals, and then I hit the square root of that function, my length is going to be about 94 to two significant figures. Now let's evaluate that and see if it makes sense. You've got a couple of bounds that will limit what your value of the vector is going to be. It's slightly longer than the 88, and so that would be the case. And it's less than the sum of 33 plus 88. So we know then that our vector makes sense. Now we've used that Pythagorean theorem to calculate the value of that vector. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, some other ideas that work with vectors, the same logic. Look at the following diagram. What is the resultant vector? Well, if you look at this vector here, plus that vector, plus the third vector. In those cases, it doesn't matter what order that I put those vectors in. My resultant vector is simply from the tail of the original one to the head of the last one. So if I were to draw that in there, here's my resultant vector. Right there. Okay. Now let's evaluate how we could actually calculate the position of this vector. If I were on an x and y coordinate system, it has some value x comma y comma. That point does. We're going to visit that a lot here in a little bit. But if you look at what its values of x are, look at this vector. Doesn't it have a value of x and a value of y? Doesn't this one have a value of x and a value of y? And the third one has a value of x and a value of y. So if I translate those over here, there are the values of the y. This is the first line. That's the value of the second line. And that's the value of the y for the third line. The same logic holds true here. There's the value of the x for the first line. There's the value of the x for the second line. And there's the value of the x for the third line. So the x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to a new vector's values. And you see how I've drawn now a triangle right in here? This new triangle that we're creating on our coordinate system has those values for its final value of x right here. From that, I can calculate the magnitude of the length here. The y is the same, y1 plus y2 plus y3 is equal to the value of the y here, giving us the second value. And from that, I could calculate the magnitude of the uh, hypotenuse. Now, let's uh, take a look at another concept before I move on. What about this triangle that we drew down below? 
Can I calculate the angle right here? The angle theta, right there. If you remember your logic from your trigonometry, sine of the angle theta is equal to the value of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent value over the length of the hypotenuse. In this instance, we've got the opposite and the adjacent, but no hypotenuse, so neither one of those could be used. But we remember that tangent of theta is equal to the opposite value over the adjacent value, like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the angle theta here, and I'm going to do it a little bit of a weird way. I'm going to divide both sides by tangent, so I end up with theta is equal to the tangent of the negative 1 of the relationship opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, when I do that, that button happens to be on my calculator. So I could just take that and insert that value onto my calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put in then the 33 divided by the 88 equals hit second function button tangent and it gives me the angle theta in that instance that is 20.1 degrees or to two significant figures we got a 21 degree angle so the way I would label the value of this vector that I did from the previous one I would say it's 94 newtons at 21 degrees to the left of my original And you have to specify direction. So you have magnitude now, and you have direction. And we've been able to just use a simple little bit of logic here to solve for both the magnitude and the direction.